have created this training video using a format that contributes to enhanced and accelerated learning. However, we recognize some trainers will want to move freely throughout the video in order to better support their training schedules and processes. Therefore, the following time code markers are provided for the trainer who wishes to move forward or backward in the video to a specific training section. Severe limb trauma is a common cause of moderate to severe extremity bleeding, amputation, and fatalities. Tourniquet use controls life-threatening hemorrhage from an extremity injury and increases patient survivability. Tourniquets have been used in the military and civilian pre-hospital care for thousands of years to save lives and limbs. Every service member in the United States military is deployed with a tourniquet as part of their first aid kit. If applied correctly and efficiently, tourniquets save lives with low incidence of adverse side effects. Methods to stop moderate to severe bleeding, such as pressure points and dressings, take considerably longer and do not ensure that blood loss is completely stopped. Tourniquets provide EMS personnel with an effective tool for decreasing blood loss when elevation and direct pressure fail. Tourniquets offer EMS providers a quick and effective solution to stop extremity bleeding, allowing time to assess for other injuries or treat other patients. The use of tourniquets during man-made or naturally caused mass casualty events extends resources. A study at Boston Medical Center from 1999 to 2006 found that pre-hospital tourniquets can be appropriately applied to control life-threatening hemorrhage from an extremity injury and that their use is not associated with neurovascular complications. The MAT responder is fast, application and blood flow occlusion in under 30 seconds. It is safe, compression can be applied in small, controlled increments. The MAT responder is easy to use, designed for all levels of medical personnel, and can be quickly taught to non-medical personnel. The MAT responder is effective. It provides 100% occlusion of blood flow, as measured by Doppler blood pressure and oximeter sensors. The tourniquet is efficient. It can be applied with one hand. The MAT responder is multi-purpose. The open C-cuff design allows the MAT responder to be applied to both arms and legs, including trapped limbs. The mat responder is versatile and can be used on limbs as small as a 4-inch diameter forearm to a 39-inch circumference thigh. The mat responder provides rapid release and or reapplication in 10 seconds or less. The mat responder is secure. The mechanical advantage system ensures that the tourniquet does not slip or loosen during the application process. The mat responder tourniquet is lightweight, weighing under 6 ounces, and comes in a compact package. The mat responder is durable, operates in extreme and adverse conditions such as mud and grime submersion, full submersion in water and submersion in sand, and extreme cold, ice encrustment, and on hard surface or concrete impact. The mat responder comes packaged in a clear bag with notches for easy tear opening. Inside, you will find the mat responder and the two-sided printed instructions for use. These instructions are printed in several languages, and among clear and concise application instructions, you will find the important lot number, expiration date, and corporate contact details for Ping Medical. This is the adjustment buckle. This is the adjustment webbing. This is the buckle hook. Let's stop for a minute and look inside the hook. There's a small detent that is designed to lock the buckle into place during application. When you connect the buckle to this hook, it is important to lock it into place before attempting to tighten the webbing. This entire piece is called the C-cuff or the chassis. It is the body of the mat responder. Shown here is the turnkey, which rotates in a clockwise direction only. It is used to tighten the tourniquet using very fine micro-adjustments. Here, on the upward face of the turnkey, is the application time label. Providers can use a Sharpie or ink pen to annotate the time of the tourniquet application or the time that they make any adjustments to the tourniquet. This neoprene covering is colored in EMS safety orange, which allows medical personnel to easily identify the presence of a tourniquet. The covering also protects the inner workings of the mat responder, the mechanical advantage system, which allows you to easily tighten the tourniquet and apply sufficient pressure to occlude arterial blood flow with as little as two fingers if necessary. Also visible on the neoprene covering are heat transfer markings. This marking 
The Release Transfer identifies the Push to Release button that will disengage the mechanical advantage system and instantly release pressure on the tourniquet. Shown here is a spring-loaded friction gate on the adjustment buckle. Pushing on this gate lifts the bar from the adjustment webbing, which allows the webbing to move freely through the buckle. If this gate is released, the teeth will engage the webbing, holding it securely in place. It is important to note that the design of the gate allows the webbing to be pulled through in one direction only. This allows the webbing to be tightened by pulling the loose end of the webbing, but with the gate released, as the tourniquet is tightened, the gate locks down on the webbing, preventing any slippage. To loosen the tourniquet, you must either press the buckle gate, lifting the teeth from the webbing, or you must press the release button, or you can unhook the buckle from the hook on the chassis. When the decision is made to apply a tourniquet to an injured limb, the provider unpacks the mat responder, unhooks the buckle, and places the C-cuff or chassis one to two inches above the injury, or as high on the limb as is possible based on your training and your organization's tourniquet application protocols. How the hook and chassis are oriented depends on the position of the provider applying the tourniquet. In this example, because the provider's dominant hand is his right hand, he is on the patient's left side. The best orientation for the chassis hook is to the outside of the patient. This is because the provider will pull the loose end of the webbing to tighten the tourniquet, and he will have more leverage pulling toward his dominant hand than he would pushing away from it. In this case, the best way to position yourself relative to the patient is to work on the side of the patient closest to the injured limb. It is counterintuitive and mechanically awkward to work across the patient's body. Therefore, the best rule for orientation on the fly is to orient the hook of the chassis toward the provider. If the situation dictates how you must position yourself relative to the patient and due to confined spaces or other environmental considerations, you are forced to work across the midline of the patient, just remember to point the hook on the C-cuff toward you and you will have the maximum leverage for tightening the tourniquet. Hold the C-cuff with your non-dominant hand and pull the loose end of the adjustment webbing with your dominant hand until the tourniquet is seated firmly and tightly against the patient's injured limb. You should not be able to fit more than one or two fingers underneath the webbing at this point. It is important to tightly pull the webbing before attempting to rotate the turnkey. Slowly twist the turnkey in a clockwise direction to tighten the tourniquet. Continue turning until the bleeding stops. That is your guideline for how tight it needs to be. The patented mechanical application system on the mat responder allows for fine micro-adjustments in pressure, requiring minimal user-applied force by the provider during the application process. The turnkey is so easy to turn that it can be accomplished with just two fingers, or even if the provider has an injured hand. The mechanical advantage technology is what makes this possible. With the hemorrhage controlled, flip the turnkey down into the folded position to reveal the application date and time label. Using a Sharpie or ink pen, annotate the time of the application. If you move or adjust the tourniquet at any time, annotate the time here again. Before attempting to transport your patient after applying the mat responder tourniquet, it is important to secure the excess adjustment webbing. If this webbing is left unsecured, it presents an entanglement hazard. The webbing could snag during movement or transport and force an accidental, rapid release of tourniquet pressure. This, in turn, could cause a potentially fatal rebleed on your patient. Therefore, we recommend this simple task of securing the webbing. To do so, simply wrap the webbing back around the limb, as shown, and return it over the face of the turnkey. Now loop it and pull tight. Leave enough slack to allow you to place a quick release loop, as shown. To release the webbing, simply reverse the process. With the webbing secure and the turnkey covered, the patient is now ready for transport. The mat responder comes out of the package in the ready configuration. That is, the mechanical advantage tightening system is unwound and ready for application. However, let's say you need to remove the mat responder from your patient and reapply it, because for the mat responder to work properly, it must be in the ready-to-apply configuration. First, make sure the adjustment buckle is detached from the C-cuff hook. 
Now move the adjustment buckle to the far end of the adjustment webbing and set the buckle down for a moment. Using two hands, pick up the entire chassis or C-cuff. Now using your thumb, press the release heat transfer. This will be pressing the actual button on the polycarbonate chassis shown here with the cover removed. This button disengages the internal cam allowing the turnkey to rotate freely, essentially unwinding the mechanical advantage tightening system. Now using your other hand, pull on the base of the adjustment webbing as shown. This user applied force will unwind the tightening mechanism. You will want to keep pulling until the turnkey stops unwinding. Your visual check to confirm the tightening system is reset is right here. You are looking to see this stitching where the adjustment webbing can be seen here protruding from under the neoprene cover. This is a very rapid process so let's see it again in real time. Unhook the buckle and move it to the end of the webbing. Pick up the C-cuff and press the release button while simultaneously pulling on the webbing at the base of the chassis until the stitching can be seen here. The mat responder is now ready for application or reapplication. This section of the training video demonstrates the application of the mat responder tourniquet in real time. If you are not comfortable doing the application at this speed, it is recommended you return to the previous section, the application walkthrough, and review until you are comfortable with and understand the procedure. Position yourself relative to the patient, remembering it is best to work directly next to the injured limb and not across the patient's body. Place the C-cuff or chassis, orient the hook of the C-cuff toward the provider, Hold the C-cuff with your non-dominant hand and pull the loose end of the adjustment webbing with your dominant hand until the tourniquet is seated tightly against the patient's limb. Rotate the turnkey in a clockwise direction to tighten the tourniquet. Tighten until the bleeding stops. With the hemorrhage controlled, flip the turnkey down into the folded position and annotate on the date and time label with a Sharpie or ink pen the time of the application. Secure the loose end of the adjustment webbing to prevent accidental release using the method shown in this video or any method your medical direction approves. With the webbing secure, the patient is now ready for transport. This completes the training video. It is recommended you review as often as needed to maintain proficiency.